Voices for Children provides legal advocacy for children and youth in the foster care system. And joining me from Voices for Children is Jennifer Hoffman. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. So Voices for Children has been around here in St. Louis area for a number of years. Yes, we have been around since the 1980s. Okay. Um, and recently, uh, a few years ago, we merged with CASA of St. Louis County, and now we're all one umbrella organization under Voices for Children. And CASA of St. Louis County is what exactly? Um, it was an organization that provided CASA advocates, similar to what Voices for Children did in the city. We uh, merged together to become one organization and pool our resources together. So CASAs are court-appointed special advocates. They're community volunteers that we train and supervise and work together to advocate for kids in foster care. Okay, so voice, Okay, so let's talk about that because <laughs> what, you know, who, who are you helping and why and how do these kids come to you? Why don't we talk about that? Give us sort of a brief overview of Voices sure. for Children. So in the state of Missouri, if a child is abused or neglected and removed from the care of their parents, the state takes custody and the court becomes involved. And at that point, the law requires that a child be appointed a guardian ad litem, um, and which the law also allows for the appointment of a court-appointed special advocate. And so we, Voices for Children, provides both of those, the legal advocacy in some cases and the cost of volunteers in conjunction with that. Okay, so the court-appointed um, advocate is the volunteer. Yes. Okay, and then you, you're an attorney, actually, and yes. so you're the other half of that team that works with these children. Yes, exactly. Okay, so give us an example of a child who has been taken out of their home, which mm -hmm. is traumatic for any child. Like, it, was, it was traumatic before they were taken out, and then once then they're moved into a foster care home, probably. Absolutely. Um, and then they, they come to you. So what is that like? How do you approach that situation? Sure. So we're, our CASA volunteers, we have a pool of CASA volunteers who we would, upon receiving a case of um, a child or children, if there's more than one, children in the fam more than one child in the family, mm -hmm. we would receive that case try to match an appropriate volunteer to that, and then we would get started on our advocacy. So we have teams of advocates that could include a legal, um, an attorney, a legal component, a social worker. Um, we have social work professionals on staff, and then we have our CASA volunteers. So a combination of that team would become appointed to that case and would get started immediately on identifying what those kids need visiting them in their placements, going to their schools, attending meetings, um, requesting medical records, sort of identifying anything and everything that that child needs, and then we would work together to ensure that the state is providing that. Mm -hmm. So how many children are we talking about in the course of a year? So over the course of a year, we represent about 850 kids with about 350 volunteers. So 850 new um, new kids come into this program every year, or these are existing? Existing yeah. and new. So and about 200 would be new, and then about 600 would be ones that um, remain in care for that year. So you work with these kids from the, the first time they're taken out of their family homes for how long? We work with them until they achieve permanency, and that can be achieved through a couple of different ways. It could be placed with a relative who wants to adopt them or get legal guardianship of them. They could um, be emancipated or age out of the system. There's a couple of different ways that children can reach permanency, but we really stay with them from beginning to end. Mm -hmm. And aging out is what, age 18? It can be anywhere after the age of 18, but most of the time we see children not age out until the age of 21. Okay, and why is that? Um, well, if you can imagine, at the age of 18, not many uh, people are ready to take on the world and have a plan to be able to uh, provide for themselves, mm -hmm. have housing, that type of thing. So we really try to, and the state does a wonderful job of providing resources for those kids, whether that be um, you know, financial management classes, um, mm -hmm. learning how to be independent, going to school, trying to get through college or a trade school, mm -hmm. um, get a job, those types of things. So these are for the older kids? Yes. Yeah, and you yes. help them find those classes yes. and that kind of thing? Yes. All right, very good. We're going to take a quick break, Jennifer. When we come back, we're going to talk more about Voices of Children and how we can help you here in St. Louis, how our, our community volunteers can help out. Stay with us at STO Live. We'll have more with Voices for Children after this break.